Hello and welcome to Greenfleet Talks. My name is Kate Armitage and I'm your host for our discussion today. I'm delighted to be joined once again by Lee Brown, Head of Ozone and Finance Director of Interactive Fleet Management at the Grosvenor Group. In this interview, we're casting our attention to the future and asking what more needs to be done by government and industry to make sure fleets are ready for 2035 and beyond. The, the government has, as we know and we've discussed before, put in place a wide range of subsidies and policies to incentivise fleets to switch to ultra low emission vehicles. Um, do you feel that the contract hire and fleet management sector is doing enough to support fleets in this transition? It's, uh, I, I guess I can only, I can only speak on, on behalf of, of, the, of the Grosvenor Group, really. Um, I feel we're, we're doing as much as we can. You know, we, we have our ozone products. We, we, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time helping our customers uh, introduce, uh, introduce low emission fleets, low emission vehicles onto their fleet, per se. Uh, you know, we, we provide a, you know, a, a very, very much a consultative approach uh, and we provide a lot of advice. We've got, you know, more and more people here now, uh, uh, you know, uh, are becoming more and more clued up on, on you know, the, the infrastructure, the operational side, uh, the financial side, of course, uh, of low emission fleet. So, uh, you know, we, we, we do actively get involved and, and recommend uh, to our customers that they, uh, you know, put measures in place to, to help lower their, their carbon footprint and, uh, and improve their fleet policy as well, because uh, you know, in, in line with uh, you know the government incentives, certainly with with company cars, uh, you know the the most attractive vehicles now for for, for employees are, are, are battery and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So uh, you know, the employers, you know, in, in some cases, do need our help to to to, to implement those policies uh, and help them improve and bring their their car policy uh, up to date. So. We're doing a lot. Uh, is everybody else? Is the, is the industry in total uh, or in its entirety? I'd like to think so. I'm sure you know the leasing companies are out there helping their helping their customers. Uh, you know, the, obviously the government has uh, has put um, you know, measures in place. You know, at the manufacturer level now that there's obviously uh, restrictions around their, their production. Uh, so you know they're they're being sort of incentivized, if you like, um, sort of. Uh, to, to improve their offering in line with, uh, you know, the, the government's agenda. So um, I think that, yeah, we're doing, we're doing a lot. Uh, I think, yes, we could always do more. Great. And, and I think, um, uh, I think I read that um, for um, the Grosvenor Group, your, your, of your new orders that are replaced, you're running at about 50% being EV and yeah. hybrid. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, again, it's, I suspect we're not not alone. I, I'd like to think that our that our uh, our rate or, or percentage of, of, of ultra low emission vehicles is higher than others, but uh, I'm sure sure the leasing companies will, will be the same, and there'll be an upward trend for for uh, ultra low emission vehicles. Um, you know, purely because of, of the uh, the tax breaks that uh, are available uh, for April this year. You know. We've uh, zero benefit in kind tax on electric vehicles and uh, you know significantly cheaper benefit in kind tax on, on vehicles with a, a CO2 of 50 or below so um, so yeah so I mean it's it's great to see. So uh, the next uh, the next kind of uh, area which is uh, extremely contentious and I always upset people when I when I ask this question so let, let's see how we get on Lee but um, the Office for Low Emission Vehicles, as we know, uh, is currently consulting on bringing forward the ban on new petrol and diesel cars and vans, including hybrids, to 2035. Uh, recently, the BVRLA have stated that the ban on hybrids should only go ahead if the battery electric vehicle supply and affordability and infrastructure is in place. So in that context, uh, what, what's your position on including plug-in hybrids in the 2035 proposal? Uh, wow, it's a, it's a long question. Um, I, I think it's, it, it's probably a bit too soon, but there's a caveat to that, really. Um, plug-in hybrid vehicles offer you know, a great alternative for, you know, for people that... Um, 
perhaps aren't ready to take that giant leap into to battery electric vehicles. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think the government are, are obviously, uh, you know, are aware, as, as many of us are in, in the industry, that, you know, plug-in hybrid vehicles um, don't always get driven correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, they're not always charged. And, uh, and then, of course, consequently, they become you know, more damaging to the environment than a, a normal petrol or diesel vehicle. It's obviously lugging around a big battery. Um, but I think if, if they're used correctly, I think that, um, you know, they, they, can, they can work well. And uh, I think there's a place for them. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, if, if, we're, if we're looking, um, you know, in the, to the, in the, in the longer, longer term future, uh, I think, you know, if the government continue to do what they are, which is hugely incentivised the battery electric vehicles, then... I guess there's an argument to say, well, why do we need plug-in hybrid vehicles? If, if, you know, if, if the infrastructure, infrastructure keeps improving, you know, the ranges keep improving, uh, then I guess you could say, would, would there still be a place for them in, in you know, 20, 25 years' time? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, th I think it's a, it's a very interesting one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think you know the the tax breaks available to for electric vehicles. If if the government continue to, to leave them in place, um, mm -hmm. then I think the you know the the ultimate uh, the ultimate aim is to, is to get everybody driving electric vehicles. Yeah, I I, I agree, and I think the um, uh, plug-in hybrid uh, vehicles have had a have had. Uh, not wrongly have have had a bad press I think in the last five years because they have not necessarily been driven correctly no um, but uh, yeah I, I, I think it's a, a, a little bit of uh, do we need the stick or can we use a carrot to incentivize people towards mm. fully battery electric vehicles and and mm. we may see that plug-in hybrids naturally die a death um possibly yeah uh, i think at the moment you know for, for a lot of people it's it's better than having a petrol or diesel it's better for the environment lee what advice would you give to those who are interested in smart charging and vehicle to grid technology um i mean well smart charging is, is a no-brainer um you know we we absolutely recommend that uh, you know anybody that takes a, an electric vehicle uh, you know utilizes smart charging uh, it's a great way for, for employees to save money. You know, you, what you're effectively doing is, you know, charging your vehicle up, uh, certainly, you know, uh, using cheaper electricity or energy tariffs, uh, charging your vehicle at night um, rather than the daytime. Um, you know, and also I think, you know, it will help with, um, you know, the drain on the, on the grid because, you know, your, your vehicle will charge, you know, up to a certain point in the day when you need it to be charged. It won't just sit there, uh, you know, just charging as soon as you plug it in. If it doesn't need to charge and there's a, you know, there's a, a, a large demand for electricity at that point in time, then it will charge later on. So, um, you know, it does its bit to support the grid. It saves, saves drivers, uh, you know, saves them money. So, um, yeah, we would always recommend uh, that, that uh, smart charging is utilised. Um, vehicle to grid technology is 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 a is a great and interesting concept. It's still sort of quite new um, at the moment. I know there's there's certain countries across Europe that are perhaps a bit further ahead of us uh, with V2G technology. Uh, you know, ultimately there there will be a, a huge hole between supply and demand for electricity uh, as we put more and more electricity, uh, more and more electric vehicles onto the road. So um, something needs to happen. Mm. Um, vehicle to grid technology, I think, is a is a sensible um, a sensible thing to to pursue because, uh, of course, what it does is effectively means that all of the all of the battery battery electric vehicles on the road are, are big capacitors and can actually provide electricity to the grid uh, at times when the grid needs some electricity. We we kind of said at the very beginning that we're going to be looking at forward thinking and we've talked about vehicle to grid which is five or ten years out and we've talked about the um, proposed ban uh, on ICE new car sales being 2035 uh, currently 2040 so if we push out even further than that and um, the UK uh, is working towards net zero emissions by 2050 mm. 
Uh, is it, uh, is it a, a, a fair uh, expectation on fleets um, to, to be ready for net zero by 2050? Uh, will, will the vehicles be there and will it be cost effective? Um, uh, yeah, I guess um, it's, it's, yeah, we, we need, need to have something to aim for. Um, and uh, so it abs absolutely, absolutely gives us uh, something to aim for. Of course, you know, our, our, I'd like to think it's achievable. How far we've come in the last, you know, 10, 15 years is incredible. So you sort of think, well, in which case then, how far can we go in the next 30 years? So from, on that basis, you know, I, I think 2050 is, is absolutely achievable. Um, you know, I think there's a huge amount of work to, to cover in that time. You know, I think, you know, there's a, a huge amount of investment, you know, required for, uh, in the infrastructure. Um, you know, and I think, um, you know, manufacturers as well, you know, the, you know, there's a lot of electric vehicles on the market now, but is there enough? Probably probably not enough choice still. Um, so, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, in the next sort of, yeah, 10 to 15 years, I, you know, I'd like to see the momentum continue continue uh, to a point where in you know perhaps 15 years time a, a, an electric vehicle is almost an obvious choice for yeah. for you know many of it, the vast majority of us yeah um, and, think, and, and Lee um, uh, when you when you think about a typical replacement cycle for a fleet yeah three years you know we're sort of talking yeah 10 10 replacement cycles really right. um, and you know, if I if I look at my own position, and or certainly our, our sort of uh, our average CO twos over the last you know ten to fifteen years of the vehicles we're registering, yes, you know the last certainly the last three or four years we've, we're seeing more and more plug-in hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles. This year will be a, a you know a record high. So you know if you think if every replacement cycle over the next um, you know twenty to thirty years uh, you know yields those reductions in in carbon, then it is absolutely achievable, Kate. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And, and if, even if it's, if you take an incremental view, that if you've got 10 replacement cycles, next time a fleet comes around for replacement, they should be saying minimum 10%. Uh, yeah. It should be battery electric. And then the yeah. next time, minimum 10%, minimum yeah. 10%, minimum 10%. Yeah. Then you will, you will get there. So the, uh, the the iPhone was launched 13 years ago, and that was kind of like a, a first real smartphone. And uh, and here we are now. You know, nobody can. You know, how many people do you know that don't have a smartphone now? I mean, you know, they're you know we all have them. And uh, oh, you're so you know, you're so think, right. You're so. Um, right. You know, so I think you'll probably. I think yeah. I think it'll be the same with cars. I certainly hope so. We've all we've all got to face change at some time. Right? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Lee. I mean, I think there's definitely exciting challenges ahead over the next 30 years. Uh, and it is great to have companies like the Grosvenor Group and the Ozone team who are, who are working uh, with a clear vision towards what needs to be done. Uh, that is all we've got time for. So thank you, Lee, for joining. Thank you, no, thank you, Katie. Well, uh, uh, and uh, thank you for watching Greenfleet Talks. Uh, please tune in to Greenfleet 365 again soon.